this vlog is a little bit more intimate and vulnerable than some of my videos that I do. This one's about my body and about my wellness journey over the last several months. Just wanted to share the things that I've found useful and helpful working with a coach. And I hope that there's something in this that's also helpful for you. So I wanted to talk to everybody about my wellness journey. I know it's been a while coming because I started this at the end of August and many of you have asked on Instagram, when are you going to do a YouTube video? We want to see the YouTube video. So here it is. I'm just going to talk to you candidly about what has changed for me, the lifestyle changes that I've made since the end of August. Of course, we moved to Tucson in July. So the climate change was huge and was very inspiring, but even though it's so warm here, I just still felt so self-conscious of the baby weight in my body. I didn't want to get outside. I didn't want to wear next to nothing, <laughs> going to the pool and all those things were super stressful. So what I ended up doing um, is getting lucky and um, having a hair client who is an amazing trainer and coach, a really um, more of a coach in terms of lifestyle and mentality and just loving yourself as a woman. Um, her name's Natasha Hopkins and she has Wild Woman Wellness is her, her website, so you have to check it out. And um, if you want to go on a similar journey or get some help with with your own physical and mental growth, I would definitely highly recommend her. So I met her in my hair chair. I was braiding her hair and that's how we met. And I was so impressed with um, her, her photos, her body. I mean, she looks amazing in person. And then when you go on, on her social media, it's, it's like, you know, just, unbelievable how she transforms for competitions so she competes um, for physical fitness competitions and um, anyway so she's a professional she's an expert she's amazing she's excellent at what she does and I think that she was just the perfect um, gift to me in terms of starting this journey and um, being successful I would say arguably I've tried to start the journey several times. <laughs> I have um, started and fallen off, started and fallen off. I've been the yo-yo dieter as far as 10 pounds lost, then I gain it back. Um, or I start going to the gym and then, um, you know, it, it just doesn't work out and I stop, I can't, can't get there, do the kids' schedules and things like that. So it's just been a challenge. It's been a, a battle. I think the, one of the biggest challenges, of course, is just the mental aspect of it in terms of um, coming, coming across so much opposition and criticism and people picking my body apart and teasing me for any, any and everything pretty much and racializing every part of my body. This is more black, this is more white, this is blah, 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 blah. And it just, the noise gets so loud in my head that I, um, you know, I just don't wanna think about it and I don't wanna look in the mirror and I don't want to talk about it with anybody else. And I just, you know, I just kinda of want to do other things. But um, I was finding that my self-consciousness and insecurities were actually getting in the way of me just living life and doing other things. So that's that was my initial goal when I started with Natasha was just so that I can get out and be that um, active mom with Langston and not be held back by what I think about my body and um, you know not want to go outside and uh, not want to go out in warm weather shorts or other you know swimsuits or other things and and just just not living life, like having that hold me back. I don't want to date. I'm not interested in that whole thing right now. I haven't dated for six years um, since I was pregnant with Langston. And uh, so this is not for a man or a woman because 
Yes, Pride Month, here we are. I am the B in the LGBTQIA, you know, um, acronym there. So whether it's a man or a woman, I'm just not in the, in the, in the right space right now to date. I'm really trying to work on myself and be there for my kids still. We're still rebuilding. And I don't think re in the rebuilding stage is the right time to bring um, another person in <laughs> to that, <laughs> that chaos and um, so on. So anyways, that um, is the kind of the timing when I met Natasha was after we moved here. And then we started working together she has been, I, I already said this, but I'm gonna keep saying it, so bear with me. She's amazing. Um, but what, what I needed was accountability and a push, and not just accountability in terms of um, the hard part of accountability, because I am plenty good enough at beating myself up, and she could tell you that. I notice all the things I do wrong in a week in terms of, you know, whether it's eating or fitness or, anything else and <clears throat> that's just my perfectionist kind of scorpio critical mind so my head is already filled with that but what i needed was accountability in terms of noticing the good so just in our weekly check-ins talking with her and she would say uh, nine times out of ten it was like you had a phenomenal week <laughs> and have you seen your before and after you know your photos and they're amazing and i'm sitting there thinking like uh, I don't see anything in those photos. She's like, excuse me? So she really opened my eyes to seeing the good and having somebody be that accountability person, that coach to cheer you on, to see that you are actually a badass, that you are actually phenomenal and fierce and that you can do this and that you are doing it. And I think that was probably the key that I was missing before when I was trying to do it on my own is I didn't give myself credit when I actually was, was doing the work, I wouldn't see results or wouldn't see the results I wanted or would just kind of get lost in the process. So I really do encourage you if you're, again, if this is for you, if this is something you're wanting to do, either losing weight or, or losing fat, building muscle, that kind of thing. Um, then having a having a person who is an, an amazing coach is super key. One of the other things that Natasha helped me do is drink a gallon of water a day, <laughs> which is still a struggle for me because I did not like to drink water until I moved to the desert and now I drink water. But I got this jug um, actually on Amazon. I know it's redundant to say, oh, I got this on Amazon. Um, but it kind of has little markers throughout the day. It actually holds a gallon and it has a handle and you can drink it. And um, that has been super helpful. She brought me weights in <laughs> before the gyms were open and in quarantine. I had dumbbells, I had um, these kettlebells and I had the amazing TRX straps that she brought me as well to complete a at-home workout setup. I've now kind of outgrown that um, setup. So I now I'm getting my butt to the gym, which I had so much social anxiety about going to the gym. And I also um, just didn't usually carve out that time, like making it non-negotiable as she calls it. <laughs> and getting somebody to be with Langston so that I could just have that one hour three times a week to get to the gym. So that's super critical because um, I wasn't going to be able to really boost my metabolism by building muscle with just continuing the at-home workouts. At first, it actually worked really well to do them at home and I was very dedicated with that. And that was kind of my comfort zone because I don't like going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> but um, after a while, you know, we, we kind of outgrew that and now I'm at the gym. So that's progress. Another thing that was progress for me um, is just, you know, changing my eating. And I think the first three, almost four months, that's all we did, all Natasha and I did and talked about was eating. Because to my, so I had to just rework my whole mindset around food because I have a history of eating disorders. 
um, anorexia and most most the I mean so I had a bit a patch of anorexia in, when I was married but the most uh, significant eating disorder that I had was bulimia and it resurfaces when I'm emotionally triggered and so um, I want to stuff my emotions I want to bury my emotions with food and then I want to purge my emotions by getting rid of the food by throwing up the food because it feels like a release like that that's then releasing all that negativity it's not a logical process it's if you have eating disorders you understand if you don't probably don't understand that but um, I've been like a recovering bulimic for many many years and so I didn't want to trigger any bulimia with eating and so what I would do when I met Natasha what I was eating was like a thousand calories a day so I was eating very low fat things I was eating a lot of carbs I wasn't eating a lot of protein and um, essentially she kept telling me you need to eat more and I was like no I don't want to eat I don't I want to lose weight I can't lose weight if I eat more that doesn't even make sense and she said no you're not you're not eating enough fat for your body to release fat I wasn't eating enough protein for my body to build muscle and muscle boosts your metabolism and she was like we need to feed you we need to get you to eat so kind of looking at nutrition in a different way was really helpful to me and but it took like I said like four months of just up here you know training my mind and it was all through food logging I've been logging my food every single day since the end of August <laughs> I am religious about my food logging I think I probably will have to log my food for the rest of my life and that's okay and I don't say that to be funny I say that because I don't have a healthy relationship with food I didn't have that growing up as you could probably imagine if you read my book there's a whole chapter on oatmeal and that chapter is not pleasant so a lot of abuse was um, centered around food healing from trauma was centered around food so my relationship with food was not nutrition for my body it was punishment it was um, you know some kind of tie or connection to trauma and emotional issues and so that had to be reworked and just to log my food and to meet the specific macros that she sets out for my goals each week has been the biggest challenge and also the biggest joy because now I know that I can succeed and out <laughs> After I really did just let go of my ideas about food and trust the process and trust Natasha, then um, you know what I found was that I did start to lose weight after I started eating more fat and more protein and just more food in general and started meeting those macros, then the weight did start to come off. And I was, I was shocked because I thought that you had to be hungry to be losing weight and she was like we don't want you hungry we want to keep your cortisol levels up and she was just kept explaining to me the science behind it I'm very um, tuned into science scientific uh, reasoning it is something that really works for me so if somebody can break it down in that way then I get it and I can do it and that's really what happened and also like I said <clears throat> the one of the other big uh, things was just her encouragement. So I'm going to show you in this little video. I'm going to show you kind of a breakdown of uh, five days of food. So just examples of what I eat. So I went from eating a thousand calories to now I eat um, 1500 calories. I'm inclining towards 1600 or so, but uh, in order to build muscle. But that's all in her hands because um, she can tell how my body is responding to different things. There's so many things with weight loss that I did not understand before working with the coach. And um, obviously, the food thing I had to get I had to get my mind right about the food. <laughs> um, with Natasha, she will tell you you can eat anything, 
as long as it fits the macros of protein, carbs, and fat, the specific numbers of protein, grams of proteins, carb, carbs, and fat, um, you can eat anything. So that was also very freeing to me because I like to bake, as many of you know, and I didn't want to give up that, like there was kind of a sadness of, can I, like, will I ever be able to cook again? If I'm going to change my lifestyle around food, how can I enjoy food and do that? So we've, we've worked with that and got come to, you know, a good place, um, for, for, you know, just kind of continuing the process because it's not a destination. It's really a process. So that being said, I want to show you five days of food where I'm at right now. Now, I also want to just say that this is not for everyone. This isn't like if you eat these things, you will lose weight. No, because I wasn't eating these same things a month ago or two months ago or three months ago or last year in August or, you know, October, November, because Natasha's gradually inclined my, my macros. There have been times when she's cut and times when she's increased my food and that has done, has triggered different mechanisms in my body to release fat or build muscle. So once again, trying to just figure it out at home and go like, Oh, okay. Just drink, drink a gallon of water and just, you know, eat more food. <laughs> You're probably not going to necessarily lose weight just doing that. So it has to be right in terms of the science and the numbers. And so, um, I am once again, just beyond grateful to be able to work with her. So I'm going to show you my food and I showed you a little bit or talk to you a little bit about the at-home workouts, the TRX, and then also um, the gym, the process of getting my butt to actually like going to the gym and working out at the gym and feeling good. And another thing that really helped with that is I was trying to force my body to fit into certain clothes or, or force my mind to see me in certain clothes and feel good. And I thought that I had to look good in leggings and a sports bra if I was going to be going to the gym and I did not feel good in leggings and a sports bra. And so, <laughs> um, Natasha really encouraged me to just only wear the clothes that I feel good about wearing to, um, explore food, explore clothes, explore workout, techniques and methods and just really find the sweet spot of what makes me happy and what keeps me wanting to go. So um, cheers to her, all the kudos to her. She would say, no, you're the one that's di that did the work. You get the credit, but I really do give a lot of credit to her. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my food and um, I hope it helps just to give you like a little insight. I, I log on my fitness pal is the app. It's a free app. And then that coordinates with Natasha's Wild Woman Wellness app and um, all of like all of the things that are entered in there as far as my my body photos from week to week, which I'm not going to show you those because those are like bikini photos that I just can't. I I just you know there is a drastic change. Let's just say that. <laughs> but I'm not going to go there yet. I'm not ready to do the whole, like, this is my, my dimply butt before, and this is my, you know, still somewhat dimply butt after or whatever. Like, I'm just not gonna like, I, I just, yeah. So I'm not there. I may never be there and that's okay because I get to choose what photos I share and which ones I don't. And that's, that's, um, that's up to me and that's up to you on your journey as well. So here we are. Um, there are photos, there are measurements, and then there's weight. I've lost about 28 pounds. Um, I was at 168.9. I am now at 142. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, yeah, I don't even know if it's 28 pounds. Anyway, I thought it was 28 pounds. It might be a little bit more, give or take a pound. I am headed towards 135. These last eight to 10 pounds have been the hardest, of course, to take off, which is typical when you re start reaching your goal. The progress starts to like <laughs> slow down a little bit, but um, I am gonna 
get my hormones checked and just some other things because I feel like I've just had some inflammation. I don't know if it's allergies with the spring and summer here in Arizona or if it's um, like a hormonal situation or, or a food allergy or something else. So um, that has like made my body retain some water. So it's been a little bit harder the last few weeks to kind of tell what's happening with the weight. However, I am dedicated, staying, sticking to the plan, and I know it's worked wonders over the months, so I totally believe in it. And um, here's a little glimpse into uh, the food that I eat, and I hope it gives you hope that you don't have to be hungry in order to lose weight. Um, you can be satiated, you can be full, you can eat normal things that you want to eat, um, but you're going to also have to get creative, probably most of importantly with that protein, because in order to get in a gram of protein per pound of your body, which is what typically is how much you're supposed to be eating, that's a lot of protein. So it looks like a lot of protein, a lot of meat. If you don't eat meat, there are, um, there's Huma Pro. There are other, there are other sources of course for the vegans and vegetarians out there. Um, but if that, if that protein and carbs and fat ratio isn't, isn't, um, calibrated correctly, then you could be losing muscle instead of fat, or you could be gaining weight instead of losing weight or whatever. So that's kind of the magic of it. So anyway, let's get to the food and I'll talk you through it. So this is where the magic's at here, this um, split of macros of carbs, fats, and proteins, and also growing into eating five meals a day instead of just three. So this is one example of my, my daily food, three cups of watermelon, a cucumber, an apple. This is quite a bit of homemade beef jerky and some chicken breast, the protein all in that, some zucchini and eggplant that's fire roasted, and some cottage cheese, a red velvet cupcake, and some Reese's Pieces. <laughs> Pieces. And uh, this is another day here with some slow baked chicken in the Instapot, and some more cottage cheese with some apples and watermelon, two apples, watermelon, and a Smirnoff, and there's a nice generous piece of banana bread in that one four dinner rolls in this day with some um, granola two cookies a kombucha a couple cans of tuna a little bit of cheese some shrimp three cu cups of shrimp there some zucchini um, and this is another day here with the granola again and four dinner rolls a tomato some beef jerky some pretzels a green pepper, some shrimp, some tuna, and um, a grapefruit. I actually usually make the tuna with veganaise and relish, by the way. So these are Pam cakes, pancakes, they're protein-based pancakes, four cups of shredded barbecue chicken that I cooked in the crock pot, some spinach, some carrots, um, a mango, three cheddar biscuits that I made. These are amazing and fluffy and light and just like fall apart and melt in your mouth. I also drink coffee and Coke Zero a lot of times in addition to the water. Two cucumbers, quite a bit of watermelon. It's a, one of those little small watermelons cut up. Two uh, grapefruits, some cheese, two biscuits, some barbecue chicken, and my gallon of water. So again, this is how one of those other meals breaks down. Each meal breaks down um, pretty similarly with these macros. As you can see, that's the third one there. Um, and I pre-log my food for the next day because that helps me stay on track. The meals sort themselves out a little bit differently from day to day as well because not every meal is going to be the same size. <laughs> so working on all this has really helped me to get out more with Langston, taking him to the tennis courts. This is um, a little while ago we went to the tennis courts okay. to play. Well, he he basically drops the ball and then I help him hit it. So that's, you know, that's what, that's what playing tennis is like with Langston. <laughs> but he has fun. We have fun together. This is a, a mother's day dinner. We went out to Franklin and Isaiah 
Um, another big change in my lifestyle has been just walking more and I do live on a third story apartment. So these are the stairs going down from my apartment and just going up and down the stairs is a little bit of a workout. So, you know, if you want to push yourself, then, you know, live on a third, third floor or higher and you will get those. It's like an instant stairmaster every time you have to go somewhere. So my muscles are growing. I still have a long way to go. I'm still a huge work in progress, but I do want to kind of just document the results by making this video pause and kind of appreciate myself for the hard work that I've put in, appreciate Natasha for all her hard work and effort, and hopefully um, just share this with you so that, you know, if there's something in here for you, then um, it can help your life as well. So stay healthy, stay fit. Don't let your insecurities or your mindset get in the way of getting you out outside and living your life. So especially if you've got those little ones, it's just so important to feel good about being active and outside. So cheers to health and to everybody who made it through the pandemic, to everybody whose heart is still beating. You know, we've got that second chance, that new lease on life and can make our bodies into the best version that they can be. So Till next time.